Introduction Popularly known as the City of Seven Hills, Rome is situated on the bank of River Tiber. The city is situated to the west of Apennine Mountains and is located close to Rhenian Sea. Archaeological evidences show presence of human in the area of Rome that go back as far as 5,000 years. Legends and an ancient Roman scholar, Marcus Terentius Varro, say that Rome was founded in April 21, 753 BC. The story of twin brother Romulus and Remus, where Remus dies and Romulus becomes king, is often known as the day when Roma was founded. Etruscans took over the city in 640 BC and several kings ruled it for more than a century. The Etruscan rulers improved the infrastructure and made a lot of constructions throughout the city. 509 BC saw the last of Etruscan ruler Tarquin Superbus and the coming four centuries was ruled by a republic which was a small group of aristocrats who looked after the economies, politics and social life of the city and its people. The Romans had strong military forces and quickly took over Italy and then Carthage taking control of the western Mediterranean region. The huge size of Rome always posed a problem for its rulers like Pompey, Sulla, Gaius and Julius Caesar. The first emperor of Rome was Octavian, who was later known as Augustus. Augustus has command over 26 legions and he and his successors were given several powers by the Senate for life. As an emperor, Augustus had tremendous powers and he and his group of political administrators built several temples, monuments, aqueducts, arenas and other buildings. Several emperors and rulers followed Augustus under who Rome and his people saw it flourish and fall. Standing tall today, Rome is a centre of attraction for many tourists still holding within it an ocean of heritage, culture and history. Chapter 1 Ancient Rome How the name Rome was given it is thought to have been a derivation from a Greek word meaning courage and bravery and a connection with a root rum teat, which referred theoretically to the symbol of wolf that took care of the twins Romulus and Remus. The city was Ruma when it was ruled by the Etruscans. A connection can also be made with the Tiber River which was earlier known as Rumon. Forming of the City the city of Rome was initially formed by the rustic settlements on the Palatine Hill and other hills surrounding it. The Quirinal Hill was a sort of military camp for the Italic tribes. This part had an island where Tiber could be traversed and Rome became a sort of crossroad for the travellers and traders who were travelling north or south on the western part of the peninsula. Archaeologists have found proof of two settlements from the 8th century, the Titiantus and the Luceris who resided on the Quirinal Hill and the Rumi who occupied the Palatine Hill. There were several other tribes besides these who communicated in Italic. The Sabines, Umbrians, Latins, Oscans and Samnites are some of the tribes from the 8th century who share the peninsula with the Greeks and the Etruscans. Etruscans occupy the northern part of the peninsula and founded many cities which highly influenced the Romans. The only knowledge of the Etruscans has been derived from the tomb and grave findings. The excavations show that the Etruscans were warlike and were patriarchal and patrilineal. The Greeks who lived in the southern part of the peninsula also found many colonies like Crotone, Cumae, Regio Calabria, Taranto, Naples and Sibar, which were together referred to as the Magna Graecia by the Romans. Etruscans in power The Etruscans dominated Italy after 650 BC. Traditional tales have been included often when it comes to the ancient history of Rome because most of the records were destroyed by the Gauls, a Gallic tribe, in 390 BC when they destroyed the city after the Battle of Alia. The names of the kings known are questionable, however, the latter ones do have historical evidences. The Etruscans had great impact in the development of Roman Empire. 
They were good engineers and made some important constructions during their time. They built the Cloaca Maxima and bridge of the Tiber, which was named Pons Sublicius, and many more. In their quest to expand their empire, the Etruscans moved south and tried to capture the Greek lands. Although they succeeded in doing so for quite some time, but the clashes didn't last long. The Etruria started to decline, and the Romans took this opportunity to rebel and overthrew the last Etruscan ruler. They established a republic system which comprised of the nobles of the city. The magistrates were elected annually, there were assemblies, and every man had the right to participate in politics. The influence of Etruscans on Rome was there to stay. The people of Rome learned to build from temples, from them, and also follow their style of worship. Like the Etruscans, the Romans also worshipped three gods, Uni, Minerva, and Tinia. The Etruscans, on the other hand, addressed their gods as Juno, Minerva, and Jupiter. Although Rome is seen to have been influenced by the Etruscans, the Greek influence on the Romans overpowers the Etruscan culture. Roman Republic Rome dominated the Latium by defeating the nearby Latin countries and an important Etruscan country of V. The Etruscans were now confined to Etruria. Somewhere in the end of 6th century BC, Rome and Carthage together made a treaty which clearly demarcated the boundaries and structured trade among them. Sinones of Gallia and the Brenners attack the flourishing Romans. The Battle of Alia was the fiercest that happened to the Romans, but Rome soon rebuilt what they had lost. They conquered the Etruscans and seized the territory from the Gauls. They moved south where the Samnites temporarily set them back, and by 290 BC the Romans has more than half of the peninsula under their rule. Rome was frequently at war, and amidst this they also faced internal conflicts. The aristocrats, or the patricians, and the commoners, or the plebeians, had struggles amongst them. These skirmishes led to the establishment of ancient Roman Republic, where the patricians had to share the political equality with the plebeians. It was only when the plebeians left the city in 494 BC in revolt that the plebeian tribune office was formed and power was given to the plebeians. By the second century, Rome experienced an expanse in their population. The Romans now also added Sardinia and Sicily to their realms. The Romans admired the Greek civilization, and the Greeks thought that the Romans would help them settle their civil discords. The Greeks invited the Romans' multitudes to intercede in Greece. Greeks were soon subdued, and by the Romans who crushed the Macedonian assemblage in 197 BC and 168 BC. Finally, the Romans crushed Corinth and pinned down Greece under their rule. Annexation of Carthage followed soon and was finally made a Roman province. The Romans did not stop their conquests and moved to Asia once they finished with their subjugations in Spain. Rome was in danger during the end of the 2nd century, when they were threatened by the invasions of Germanic people from tribes of Totones and Cambri. They entered Italy by crossing over River Rhone. Roman army went through a great reformation under their general and statesman Gaius Marius. He also won two decisive battles in 102 and 101 BC for Rome. His way of reorganizing the army was so effective that it was kept unchanged for several centuries. Slave rebellions and social wars between Rome and her allies gave rise to numerous internal complications and the existence of Republic was under threat. By the last century, Rome was a rich and thriving empire with wealth gained from their conquered countries. The allies of Rome got less returns and rebelled. They wanted to have the citizenship because they supported Rome all along. Although the battle was lost by them, they were given what they craved for. By 1st century AD, all the inhabitants of Italy were citizens of Rome. The political ways of the Republic was now unable to control the demands of the Romans and cope with any turbulence caused in the Empire. 
the first triumvirate between Pompey, Julius Caesar and Marcus Crassus, dictatorship of Sulla and peculiar commands of Pompey made it obvious that the Republic would not last long. Julius Caesar suppressed opponents in the January of 49 BC and took Rome under his control. He ruled Rome for four years before he was assassinated in 44 BC. The leaders of the Senate, Gaius Cassius Longinus and Marcus Junius Brutus, one of the assassinators of Julius Caesar, tried to establish the Republic once again but was subjugated by Caesar's nephew and his lieutenant, Octavian and Marcus Antonius, respectively. Octavian and Marcus Antonius struggled for power for about six years, and on 2nd September 31 BC, Octavian won the final battle, which took place in the sea. Octavian was now the ruler of Rome, and is also considered the first emperor of Rome. 2nd September 31 BC is also when the Republic ended and the time Principate began. Roman Empire Early Empire Rome was in its zenith of splendour by the time the Republic crumbled. It was, by a very inch, a befitting empire to rule the Mediterranean as a capital. The population was at its peak and reached over 3.5 million, and Octavian, who was now given the title of Augustus, made sure that Rome increased her finery every day. Augustus has been praised for founding Rome as a city of brick and have left it as a city of marble. Augustus completed many of Caesar's projects and also had several constructions under his command. Successors of Augustus continued to develop the city. During the rule of Nero, Rome was vanquished by fire on the night estimated between 18th and 19th July 64 AD. This fire is referred to as the Great Fire of Rome. Much of the city was destroyed by the fiery rage, but this only gave way for newer development. Industry and commerce had a very small part to play in the administration of Rome. So in order to sustain a huge population, the required necessities were fulfilled by other parts of the empire. The payment towards the purchases was collected from the public through taxes. During the end of 2nd century, the population of Rome deteriorated. When Marcus Aurelius was the emperor, Rome was struck by a deadly plague known as Antonin Plague. An average of 2,000 people died every day. Marcus Aurelius' death in 180 AD marked the end of the rule of five good emperors. Pax Romana, or the era of peace and growth, came to an end. The year when Commodus, son of Marcus Aurelius, took over his father's throne in 177 AD has been seen as the time when Rome started to fall. In 273 AD, when the Aurelian War was completed, the population of Rome was just 500,000. Crisis of the 3rd Century Rome was a completely different place by the 3rd century. Barbarian invasions, political upheavals and natural calamities brought her down. Rome was now a capital for name. The emperors did not spend much time here now. Towards the end of the 3rd century, under the Diocletian's reforms, Rome was stripped of the duties of being the official capital of the empire. Western leaders from Ravenna, Milan and Gaul took over the charge as emperors later on and ruled Rome. When Constantine I came to throne, he made Constantinople the new capital. Most of the Roman aristocrats and artisans moved to this new capital. Christianity When Christianity first reached Rome in the 1st century AD, the religion was thought to be a type of Jewish sect and not a separate religion. The Romans did not welcome the Christianity and there were various punishments that were sanctioned by the laws. It took about two centuries for Christianity to be accepted and the laws moderated and made in their favour. The first Christian emperor was Constantine I and in 380 AD, Emperor Theodosius I made Christianity the official religion of Rome. As Rome converted to Christianity, Bishop, who was later referred to as the Pope, took charge as a senior religious figure officially in 380 AD in the Western Empire. 
Constantine did much to promote Christianity, and the first great basilica, St. Peter's Basilica, old one, was built by him. Invasions, Barbarian and Byzantine Rule On August 24, 410 AD, Rome was first attacked by Alaric, whose army was mostly made up of barbarians. A stream of attacks followed closely. The city who had subdued the world was now being sacked. The population fell steeply, and by the 6th century the population was just about 100,000. The splendid city was rummaged, and in order to survive hard times, the citizen of the city started tearing down the buildings and monuments. They used the limestone and marble from these buildings. The earlier temples were now being broken, and their stones were used to make new churches. The Pantheon was now the church for all martyrs. The Temple of Promos and Ramus was now the Basilica of Cosmos and Damien, the twin saints, and many old constructions, such as these, were converted and used to newer purpose. Julius Nepos was the last emperor of Rome who was murdered in 480, and his place was taken by Odoacer, who swore allegiance to Zeno, the emperor from Eastern Empire. Among wars and battles, Rome and her citizens suffered terribly. There were continuous wars, and the city was plagued by diseases like malaria, the aqueducts were broken, the drainage system were not maintained, the lower-lying areas were now marshes, and the population was about 50,000. After the rule of barbarians, when Rome was taken back, the supervision rights and the authority to appoint various officials were now in the hands of Byzantine authorities in Ravenna. Pope gained more power and was now considered more powerful than any other official. Justinian I was the emperor now who tried to bring up Rome by repairing it. His nephew Justinian II made some successful campaigns and captured several cities along the coastline. Much of Rome's food came from Sicily and other parts of empire, which is why they continued to be ruled by Byzantines, and if they disagreed, they would be taken over by the Lombards, who were Germanic people. Chapter 2 Medieval Rome Rome breaks up with Byzantine and forms papal states. With the revolts of Pope Gregory II in 727 and several wars and conflicts, papal states was formed. The Lombards joined hands with the Byzantines, and even though the city was protected by an immense wall, the risk was great. Pope Gregory III was the first to ask help from another kingdom. The Lombard kings were aggressive and considered Ravenna and Ferrara with Rome as their next target. Pope Stephen II went to seek help in France from the king, Pippin the Younger. Together with the armies of France under Pippin, the Lombard king Eistulf was defeated at Pavia. However, as Pippin went back, Rome was kept besieged for 56 days by Eistulf. They retrieved north as they got the news of Pippin coming back to Italy. Eistulf, keeping his promise, this time returned the lands to the Pope, after which the Papal States was born in 756. Once again, the Lombards started plotting against the annexation of Rome in 771. King Desiderius planned to seize Pope Stephen III in one of the pilgrimages to be held within the city. However, the tables turned, and in 773 the Lombards fighting under Desiderius were crushed by Charles I, who was the King of Franks, and was asked upon for his help by Pope Hadrian I. The Kingdom of Lombards fell. Once again, Rome gained back its political influence, now with a bigger trajectory. Crypta Balbi in Rome and a museum has been devoted to showcase the remains from medieval Rome. Commune of Rome and Foreign Rulers After the year 800, when Charles I, or Charlemagne, was crowned, the Holy Emperor of Rome by Pope Leo III, Constantinople cut itself from the empire. Charlemagne expanded Rome's boundaries, and Rome now had other Christian western regions amalgamated within it. Once Charlemagne died, the other kings could not lead, and therefore there were constant rivalries that the church had to face from the public. 
there was a document known as Donation of Constantine, which was prepared by the papal notaries, which said that the Pope had authority over a certain dominion from Ravenna to Gaeta. This also meant he had the power to control the important policies and decisions of the Empire. Only the very powerful popes could handle supremacy. The only problem with the papacy was that new popes were required to be elected every year, which caused a lot of havoc within the papal walls. Greed for power caused many aristocrats and people for noble families to influence the elections. Rome needed rebuilding after the city had been sacked by several intruders. The period of the older aristocrats was slowly fading and new families were taking their place. Powerful and wealthy families now supported in the construction of the city. The city was now made of traders, entrepreneurs and merchants. The citizens of Rome took inspiration from the neighbouring cities such as Viterbo and Tivoli and looked for freedom from the papacy. They wanted to adopt a communal status. Romans revolted in the year 1143 against the papacy which led to the birth of Roman Republic, Senate and Commune of Rome. The people were not happy with the church rule and the revolt, because of which the Commune of Rome was established, continued till 1155 before it was suppressed. The powers kept shifting between the Senate and Pope. It was during this time that the enemies took advantage and attacked Rome. To Rome's lack, the city was struck by plague and Rome was spared. Another communal administration was set up in 1188 by Pope Clement III. Politically, there was always chaos and stability, something that was much needed in the empire. The popes and the noble families were always in conflict. Several rulers changed and Rome was also ruled by foreign rulers for years until their rule was brought to an end in the Battle of Tagliacozzo in 1268. Among these years of conflicts and battles, when Nicholas III came into power in 1277, he relocated the popes to Vatican from Lateran. His order also stated that Rome could not be ruled by a senator who was a foreigner. In the 13th century, Rome went through a situation for decay for about 70 years. Not only were there no new constructions done, there were no efforts made to maintain the older ones. The city was in ruins. 13th to 15th century In the 13th century there rose an Italian politician to power known as Cola di Rienzi. Before he couldn't come into power, Cola was very popular among the people and it was this power that helped him in capturing the capital inn on May 20th, 1347. His deeds, once he came to power, were not impressive and was soon killed in one of the riots caused by an influential family. By 1378, there were several rulers who took charge of Rome but were never successful in doing so. It was in this year that papal schism began. There were three men who claimed to be the true Pope of Rome. This lasted for 19 years till the year 1417. The phase is also referred to as Western Schism or Great Schism. Martin V was elected to be the Pope once the Papal Schism ended. Chapter 3 Renaissance in Rome Rome is best known for its beautiful constructions and it was in the 15th century when the papacy wished to bring about a Renaissance in Rome. They were thoroughly impressed by the Italians and wished the same for Rome. They started a spree of constructions of majestic churches, town squares, public spaces and bridges. Some of the most talented artists of all times were engaged to complete the work of art. Michelangelo, Raphael, Botticelli, Perugino, Ghirlandaio were some of the renowned ones whose work we all admire. The foundation of the Renaissance period for Rome was laid by Pope Nicholas V. Vespancio da Bisticci and Lorenzo Valla belonged to this time. After centuries, Pope Nicholas V had managed to stabilize the political situation of Rome. The papacy had a strong hold of the administration of Rome. Any revolts were crushed and the rebellions were punished severely. Successors of Nicholas V, Calixtus III and Tuscan Pius II did not keep up the work started by Nicholas V. 
Pope Paul II started the work of Nicholas V and introduced back carnival in Rome. Another important milestone in the history of Renaissance is when Sixtus IV was considered as the first Pope King of Rome. Although Sixtus IV indulged in politics too much, because of which wars took place and a huge amount of wealth was drained from Rome, he just, like Nicholas V, patronised art. He has the Academy reopened and started building the Vatican Library. The official existence of the Vatican Library has been considered to be on the June the 15th, 1474. From churches to streets, he had everything rebuilt and constructed artistically. The Vatican Palace and Sistine Chapel have been decorated by some of the most prominent artists like Mino de Fiesole, Luca Signorelli, Sandro Botticelli and others. Michelangelo decorated the ceiling in the 16th century, which is gazed on by all who behold it. After the death of Sixtus IV on August 12, 1484, Rome was seen in a state of chaos once again. He was succeeded by Innocent VIII whose place was then taken over by Pope Alexander VI. There were 220 murders in time between the death of Innocent VIII and the election of Pope Alexander VI. Such was the hunger for power. On December 31, 1494, Charles VIII of France invaded Italy and made his way to Rome. Alexander VI hid himself in Castle Sant'Angelo, which was now a fortress. Alexander VI was politically shrewd and managed to chase Charles VIII out of Rome. Alexander VI favoured his son Cesare Borgia. Pope Julius II, in his reign from 1503 to 1513, took Roman Renaissance to its zenith. His successors, Leo X and Clement VII, upheld his work. Rome looked beautiful with so much art and beauty that was put into her. Raphael gained fame for his painting, while Michelangelo for his decorated ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Rome was now losing its religious status and became a popular city for parties, feasts, immoral affairs, horse races and conspiracies. The Tuscan bankers in the city helped the city flourish in the economy. Chapter 4 Early Modern History of Rome Rome was sacked in the year 1527 by the troops of Charles V, who was the Holy Emperor at that time. The soldiers trampled and crushed the city in the name of Pope Clement VII. About 1,000 people defending the city were executed before the soldiers started raiding the city. The Pope was imprisoned for months in Castel Sant'Angelo. This sack marked an end to the most marvellous eras of modern Rome. Martin Luther's claim about the greed of Pope for wealth resulted in travesty throughout Europe. Roman prestige was then questioned by the English and German churches. Pope Clement VII, successor Pope Paul III, was associated with nepotism. He drained the treasury and accumulated wealth for his son and family members. Yet he did contribute to the art and culture. His successors were not as strong and gave way for Spanish suzerainty. The next pope was elected in 1555. Pope Paul IV was not quite popular among the people and was on a hate list. His political acts led to besiege of Rome in 1556 by the Kingdom of Naples. On his death, the angry mob burned down the Holy Inquisition Palace and broke his marble statue on the Campidoglio. Counter-Reformation between 1545 and 1563, it was time for Catholic Reformation. This was an effort to reform, and there were four main elements in this reformation. Religious orders, political dimensions, ecclesiastical reconfiguration, spiritual movements. The reformation comprised of reforms in religious life, foundation of seminaries to train the priests, various spiritual movements that were centred on devotional life. There were also political activities, such as the Roman Inquisition, which had been initially formed to fight the spread of Protestantism through Italy. This group carried on their work, and ultimately, by the 18th century, the organisation was getting rid of the Church's power and removing the unorthodox crimes that were happening around Italy. Under the Counter-Reformation, the Jews had to stay in the Roman ghetto and had to stay locked at night. 
In order to distinguish themselves from the others, the women had to wear veils, while the men had to put on yellow hats. These Jewish ghettos existed for another 350 years in Europe. Pope Pius V and Charles Borromeo, who was an archbishop of Milan, were the two most significant people to have actually made the Counter-Reformation a success. The court was now a simple place, the jokers were removed, and all the bishops and cardinals were sent to the city and lived like the other citizens. Blasphemy and having concubines were acts that were sternly penalized. The prostitutes were confined to a restricted place and were debarred from prostitution. Pope Pius V's successor was unable to uphold the Reformation as his ways were not strict enough. The courtesans were back and the bad elements roved free once again, plaguing the Roman streets. Sixtus V, or Iron Pope, was firmer than Pope Pius V and was determined to reform the church and its customs. Roman streets were cleaned of procurers, hooligans, and dueling. The cardinals and nobles were not spared if they were wrong. The tax money was utilized for constructions and other public reform works. Newer houses were built and the streets were broadened. It was made a better place for the pilgrimages. Between 1595 and 1590, Rome underwent a massive change. Change for good. 18th century was an important period for the Romans. The empire spread now Latium, Marche, Ferrara, Umbria, Bologna, legations of Ravenna, Romagna, Ponte Corvo, Benevento, parts of Avignon in southern part of France, and Comtat, Venaissin, that were a part of the papal states. Rococo and Baroque art flourished in Rome at this time. This famous Spanish steps and Trevi fountain were also constructed. In 1734, Palazzo Nuovo was opened to the public. It was the first museum in the world which the people could visit. Giovanni Battista Piranesi was a famous artist who sketched several views of Rome. His versions of sketches of classic Rome were so beautiful that there were thousands who came to visit the city to see the actual ruins. Chapter 5 Modern History of Rome Unification of Italy the Pope's powers came into question when Rome was seized by the armies of Piedmont. Piedmont has already united Italy under them. From 1861 to 1929, the exact situation of the Popes was in question, and the situation has been termed as Roman question. They continued to remain in the palace and sent and received ambassadors, however did not leave Vatican till the dispute was resolved in 1929. The popes did not consider the rule of the Italian kings in Rome. A small Roman Republic took place in 1798, but it did not last long. Napoleon took Rome under his empire, and it was made a part of France. Congress of Vienna restored the papal states once Napoleon fell. Comtat Venaissin and Avignon were now made a part of France. 1849 saw another Roman Republic, and with it, rose two powerful people from the Italian unification, Giuseppe Garibaldi and Giuseppe Banzini. The Republic, like the first one, was short-lived. The mind behind these two figures was the Prime Ministry of Piedmont, Sardinia, Camillo Benzo di Cavour. For those who wanted to see a united Italy were unable to understand the exact consequences of the unification. Several revolutionaries demanded a republic, but ultimately it was in the hands of a king and his chief minister who held the power to bring together all the Italian states under a monarchy. In order to unite Italy under Piedmont Sardinia, Cavour decreed huge industrialization. Cavour thought if he, if he becomes an economic leader, all the states would subdue. Under this attempt, he also had the Piedmont army sent to join the British and French in the Crimean War. Piedmont, Sardinia and France were now in friendly terms. Pope Pius IX returned to Rome with the help of French army, which clearly showed that Rome was not going to be a part of the unification. Under the Mill Expedition and Second Italian Independence War, the whole of Italy excluding Rome and Venetia were to be unified under House of Savoy. 
Giuseppe Garibaldi, who is also considered to be one of Italy's fathers of the fatherland, played a very important role in this unification. He was a nationalist and fought in several campaigns, which ultimately led to the unification of Italy. Although Cava publicly detested the works of Garibaldi, he secretly supplied his campaigns with weapons. After some more political turmoil and the Austro-Prussian War in July 1870, Franco-Prussian War began and the then Emperor Napoleon III was unable to defend Papal States any more. The Italian army led by General Raphael Cadorna marched in Rome on September 20th of 1870 from Porta Pia. They captured the Leonine city the next day, and an interim government was formed by Cadorna. He included the local noblemen in order to avoid revolts. On October 2, 1870, Latium and Rome were taken possession of by the Kingdom of Italy. There were 133,681 who voted for the annexation, 1,507 voted against, and the remaining supported the decision. 40,785 votes were from Rome who said yes, while there were just 57 votes who disagreed and casted no. The Italian government had intended to let the popes keep certain part of Rome, Leonine City, which was a small papal state to the west of Tiber. Pope Pius IX was the elected pope when this decision was made. Pope Pius IX declined as accepting the offer would have been an indirect authorization of the legality of the Italian kingdom's rule over his earlier realm. A week after the Italians entered Rome, they took over the complete city except for the Apostolic Palace. It was now that the people of the city voted to join Italy. Rome was declared the capital of Rome on July 1, 1871. From this day till June 1929, the popes did not have any power. Even though there were no restrictions on the pope to go anywhere, Pope Pius IX declared that he was a prisoner of Vatican. Kingdom of Italy declared Rome in 1871 as their capital even though it was under the control of the Pope. Benito Mussolini swiftly rose to power after the World War I, who attacked the city in 1922 after consulting with Victor Emmanuel, who was the King of Italy for the period, and made allies with Italy. The population of the city grew to one million in the period of war. February the 11th, 1929, the Latin Treaty brought an end to the Roman question. It was signed by Cardinal Secretary of State Pietro Gaspari on behalf of Pope Pius XI and Benito Mussolini for King Victor Emmanuel III. The treaty was effective from June 7, 1929, and the agreement established an independent state of Vatican City and Roman Catholicism a significant position in Italy. Rome hardly suffered any damages in the World War II because no country or nation wanted to jeopardize the life of Pope Pius XII. Rome agreed not to take sides in the World War II, and even though the German and Allies had occupied the city in 1943, the Vatican City was untouched. After the war, Rome grew in leaps and bounds. It was now a city of fashion in the 1950s, and classic movies such as Quo Vadis, La Dolce Vita and Ben-Hur were filmed in the famous Cinecittà studios. After reaching a population of 2.8 million in the 1980s, the population slowly went down as the people moved to neighbouring suburbia. Several important institutions and government offices, including the Parliament, are located in the capital city of Italy, Rome. The city was much talked about when Summer Olympics was held in 1960. The famous Therme of Caracalla and Villa Borghese were used as the venue for the Games. The Olympic Stadium and Villaggio Olimpico were built especially for the Games and the athletes to stay. Their government cleverly utilised them later on by converting them to a residential area. Rome is a modern city, yet it embraces a long history tales of kings and queens, religion and beliefs, art and culture, wars and battles. Although there is much history that is yet to be excavated, the existing palaces, churches, fountains, public squares and tombs are all examples of the talent that the ancient Romans possessed. 
Several museums, such as Galleria Borghese, Musei Capitolini and Vatican Museums, have artifacts preserved from the ancient past. Every piece of art is admirable and exquisitely beautiful. Rome continues to be an important city in all over Italy. Conclusion Roman history is much more than just black and white words. Besides the magnificence, glory and power, history of Rome also entombs gory political upheavals, murders, wars and battles. Rome was not built in a day, and it is definitely difficult to sum up its entire history. What remains from the past is the Colosseum, the arcs of different emperors built in the memory of the triumphs over different places, basilicas, tombs, the famous Circus Maximus, forums, temples, the famous Ludus Magnus, where the gladiators were taught to fight, Pantheon, and the Ostia Antica, which is a port that has been preserved from ancient Rome. Rome is a hub for art and architecture that holds epochs of its gigantic history. Regular excavations continue to reveal some more of its past grandeur. Roma, you continue to awe.